Hi, I'm Dan Henry and I'm a customer success technical architect here at MuleSoft. In this Friends of Max demonstration, I'm going to be talking to you about AnyPoint Service Mesh, which enables you to extend your microservices network by including your non-MuleSoft applications into the AnyPoint platform sphere. Today we're going to run you through how to install and configure AnyPoint Service Mesh in your Kubernetes cluster to manage your existing non-MuleSoft applications. Right. So let's get started. So in terms of audience requirements, you'll need to make sure you have a working knowledge of Istio and Kubernetes to use any point service mesh. In terms of software requirements, you'll need to use one of the following environments, Google Kubernetes Engine, Amazon EKS, or Azure Kubernetes Service. You'll also need to have Kubernetes and one of the versions displayed on the screen. And then you'll need Istio as well, and we currently support versions 1.6 and 1.7. In this demo, we're going to use Amazon EKS, Kubernetes 1.16, and Istio 1.6. In terms of hardware requirements, you'll need to have an instance with four cores and eight gigabytes of memory. In this demo, we're using one M5.xlarge EC2 instance. You'll also need to consider production licensing and trial licensing requirements, permissioning and roles requirements, ports, IPs, and hostname allow list requirements. And finally, you'll need to be able to download, install, and configure Istio. More information on these requirements can be found at the link below this video. Now that we've gone through the prerequisites, it's time to install AnyPoint Service Mesh. First of all, we'll show you that we have a running node for our Kubernetes cluster. There we go, a EC2 M5.x large. We'll also show you that we have Istio pods running. We'll also show you that we've got some microservices running for a fictitious company called Mythical Retail who have an e-commerce website. And if we take this URL, we can show you that this website is running. There we go. Now we're going to download the AnyPoint Service Mesh client, which will allow us to install, manage, and troubleshoot our AnyPoint Service Mesh instance. We can take the curl command from the MuleSoft documentation and hit enter. Now we're going to install AnyPoint Service Mesh. When you invoke the installer, Service Catalog, AnyPoint Service Mesh Broker, and the cluster IP service components are installed in your Kubernetes cluster. The installer performs several steps as part of the installation, such as checking for dependencies and performing various configurations. Now we're going to take the AnyPoint Service Mesh commands to install AnyPoint Service Mesh on our Kubernetes cluster. Now there's a few points to highlight in this command. First of all, the client ID and client secret, which we can retrieve from our AnyPoint organization. So if we head over to the AnyPoint platform, and within access management for our master or sub business group, wherever you choose to install your service mesh, you can choose the organization and get the client ID and client secret. You'll also need a license key. If I exit out of here, we can see that I've got the license key listed in this folder. And we'll also need the platform URI pointing to the AnyPoint platform URI that we'll be installing our service mesh for. Once we hit enter, the installer will start. Now when it hits this step, it can take some time. So sit patiently, go grab a coffee, and it should be done. And there we go. We have now successfully installed AnyPoint Service Mesh on our Kubernetes cluster. Now that we've gone through the install of AnyPoint Service Mesh, we're going to configure the service mesh. Now there's two methods for configuring AnyPoint Service Mesh. We can use the command line interface and the AnyPoint Service Mesh command line interface is a unified tool that enables you to easily manage your resources. The CLI provides a layer of abstraction over the Kubernetes operations and we can use the CLI in an interactive mode from the command line prompt or in a non-interactive mode for automating scripts. The second option is using custom resource definition. If you deploy or manage your Kubernetes objects and your microservices using CRDs, 
you might find it easier to also provision your adapter and bind your services to APIs in this way. In the following section of this video, we're going to provision the adapter using a CLI, although this can be done using the CRD as well. We're then going to create APIs using AnyPoint Service Mesh, both using the CLI and the CRD. And then we're going to bind services using Kubernetes resource name, again, using the CLI and a CRD. This will then allow us to manage our APIs and we'll show you this in the portal. So first of all, we're going to install the adapter using the AnyPoint CLI and we can take the uh, command from MuleSoft documentation. So running you through this command, obviously the first thing we need to specify is the name of our adapter. We also need to make sure that the adapter is in the same namespace as the microservices that we want it to manage. I've chosen a small adapter. You can either choose small, medium or large adapters and the details of those different sizes can be found on the MuleSoft documentation or you can also run a command in the AnyPoint CLI. I've chosen two replicas and I've taken the client ID and client secret from my AnyPoint organization. So now we can hit enter. And that has started creating the adapter. So at this point we can also run ASMCTL adapter list to get some details around our adapter. And as you can see, it's provisioning still. So this can take a, a short while. So we'll let that continue to run. Another command we can also try is ASMCTL adapter logs. And this is going to get us the logs of the adapter. You need to make sure that you choose the namespace and the name when you're um, getting the logs from the adapter. Great, and that's told us that the instance was provisioned successfully. So just running that adapter list command one more time, we can see the status as ready. Next, we're going to have to restart each of our services that need to be managed by any point service mesh so that we can inject the sidecar in the pod. So first of all, we're going to get the deployment name for the patch for each of those services. And then we take the name of each of those deployment and using the command in the MuleSoft documentation, we're going to patch each of those services. To save myself some time, I've already written these out. So I'll just copy and paste those in. And now that we've run each of those patch commands to verify that the applications are redeployed, we can run the following command. And everything looks good. So now that we've uh, set up the adapter for our namespace, we can start creating some APIs. So for the first one, we're going to create an API using the AnyPoint CLI. So I'm just gonna take the command from the MuleSoft documentation and I'll run you through that. So the first one we've chosen to do is the order API. So obviously given that the name order API we're putting it in the namespace NTO payment. The environment ID is the environment where we want to create the API instance. So in this scenario, I'm going to be creating the API in my test environment in API Manager. The group ID is the ID of the group of assets on exchange. So this is tends to be your organization ID and you can get it from the URL on the API Manager landing page or from Access Management. I've chosen a version of 1.1 the instance label is NTO payment, spec tags. I've chosen both orders and NTO payment. Make sure there's no space between those tags. And of course the client ID and secret is from my connected app, which I set up. For more information on how to set up those connected apps, you can head over to the MuleSoft documentation as well. And that has started creating. So we can run ASMCTL API list and that API is ready. So if we head over to API manager, click on the test environment, we can see that API is there, currently unregistered. So now we need to bind the API with the necessary service. So I'm gonna get the list of services. I'm obviously doing this with the order service. So I'm going to take the command again from the MuleSoft documentation 
And again, taking you through this, I've given the name of the binding order API service binding. It's in the NTO payment namespace. The adapter is the one that we created earlier. The API is the one we've just created. And the service name is the one we've just found using the kubectl get service command. So I we'll hit enter. And that has started creating. So I'm going to run asmctl adapter binding list. Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong command. It should, in fact, be asmctl api binding list. Hit enter. And we can see that that binding is ready. So again, if we head over to the API manager and we'll click refresh and we can see that that is now active. So the next step is creating an API using the custom resource definition. So we'll go through that next. So I'm just going to clear the screen. So first of all, I'll just show you we've got the inventory API YAML and the inventory API service binding YAML. And just to show you what it looks like inside the inventory API YAML. We've obviously got the name inventory API, the namespace NTO payment. We have the environment ID as before. This is the environment that we want to have the API in. In this case, I'm using test. The group ID is from our organization. Asset ID and version again, the same as before. Instance label NTO payment. We've also got an NTO payment for our API spec, just the tag and inventory API in the API instance. And as before, I'm using the client ID and client secret from the connected app that I set up to connect to the AnyPoint platform. So now we'll run the command to create this API. And that's going to start creating. So we can run again ASMCTL API list. And we can see that that's ready. So if we head over to API Manager, and click refresh we can see that's been created and again it is unregistered so now it's time to have a look at what's inside the service binding yaml so in here we obviously have the name of the service binding the name space the kubernetes api resource name the adapters resource name and of course the service resource name as well so again we'll run a command to apply that, hit enter, and that's created. So now we can run ASMCTL API binding list, and we can see that that's binding. Now, sometimes this can take a bit of a while to run its course. We can also run this command to verify the Istio sidecar status within our namespace. So that's just going to check the sidecars against each of our microservices. That's still binding, so we'll give it a moment more. So we'll try one more time. And there we go. They're both ready. So now we can head over to API Manager. When I hit refresh, we'll see those are both active. So as a final step, let's go ahead and apply a policy to one of our microservices to show how that will impact communications between microservices. So you can see here that we've got all of our microservices now. And just to show you the mythical retail web experience we had before, this is where we're going to go to the order. We're going to add to a cart, and that's going to hit that inventory API. We're then going to retrieve our customer details, which can hit the customer API. We'll then authorize the payment, which is going to hit that payment API. And then we'll place the order, which will hit the orders API. So how about we apply a policy to the payment API? And so we're just going to go into policies and we're going to apply a new policy, which is going to do client ID enforcement. And so what that's going to do 
is ask any other microservice within our Kubernetes cluster to provide a client ID in secret to speak with the payment API microservice. So that all looks good. Press apply. But if we now head up to here, click the blue logo shirt, add to cart, check out, get our customer details, authorized payment. And you can see there that the payment has failed because the web experience didn't provide the client ID and secret to talk to the, web, to the payment microservice. So there we go. So for more detail on how to apply policies, configure your service mesh, head to our MuleSoft documentation, which you can find in the link below. Thanks again for watching this Friends of Max demonstration. Feel free to leave a comment, check out the links below the video, or have a watch of our other Friends of Max videos too. I look forward to seeing you again soon.